All right, so we look at an example here where we, we went through this whole kind of epsilon m approach to, to establishing the existence of, of a limit, proving that the limit is one. Um, you know, but of course, before you can do this sort of epsilon proof, you have to have some idea of what the limit is, which is why we took this estimation approach. Um, now, for a lot of people, myself included, uh, if, you, if you give me this sort of estimation argument, I'm going to accept that, right? It shows that you've got a pretty good uh, basic understanding of, you know, how numbers work, how functions work, kind of this, this you know, it, it, it takes a little bit of, of skill and intuition to be able to do these estimation arguments, right? But once you get a feel for it, most people will accept it. Some might want something that's a little bit more rigorous. So one of the things you can do, if you want to be a bit more careful, is you can establish a few basic examples. Um, the first one is the following. For any power bigger than 1, if we do the limit as x goes to infinity, of 1 over x to that power, okay, this limit will always be 0, okay? And it'll be true at both plus and minus infinity. Another one, occasionally exponential functions pop up. The limit as x goes to plus infinity of e to the x is infinity, but the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x is zero. And of course, if you remember what the graph of the exponential function looks like, this is probably no surprise, right? Remember that that any exponential function with a base larger than 1 has a graph with this basic shape, right? Um, if, uh, if the base is between 0 and 1, that's kind of the same thing as having e to the minus x, in which case this is just flipped, and then it's going to be the limit at plus infinity that's 0 and the limit at minus infinity um, that is infinite, right? Um, so. If, if you know these, you can, you can deal with just about every limit involving infinity. Um, maybe another one that's, that's worth mentioning, the, the limit as x goes to infinity of, of sine x, or really any trig function, doesn't exist, right? All the trig functions are periodic, so they Every, every 2 pi, they repeat their values, right? Or every pi, if you're looking at, say, the tangent function, right? So there, you, can never, you can never find this m so that you can get within epsilon of some value because the function is going to keep going up and down, up and down. doesn't matter how far out you go. It's always going to keep oscillating back and forth. It's never going to settle down to a particular value. Um, and then from here, you start getting a bit of a feeling for, you know, combinations of these things, right? So what happens if you have, say, an exponential function that's multiplied or divided by a polynomial? What happens if you have a trig function that's multiplied or divided by a polynomial? Things like that. Uh, so as you continue on, you start developing some intuition uh, with sort of relative growth speed for different classes of functions, right? Typically, your, your trig functions are, are, you know, sine and cosine, are, they're bounded, right? So bounded functions, in some sense, don't grow at all. They just keep, you know, they, they're stuck within a certain range of values. Um, logarithmic functions go to infinity, but they go very slowly, slower than any polynomial function. Polynomial functions go to infinity reasonably quickly, but not as fast as an exponential function, right? So typically, if you're looking at ratios, right, if you have, say, an exponential over a polynomial, right, uh, the exponential is going to go to infinity faster than the polynomial. So, so overall, the whole thing is going to be infinite. The exponential function wins. Um, so a lot of limits involving infinity uh, you can tackle just by sort of understanding some basic examples. 
and then and then knowing kind of relative r growth rates and and how they compare right um, the last one that we'll look at and we'll, we'll do this in the next video is the fact that you know the higher the power n is the faster x to the n is going to grow right so the faster x to the n is going to go to infinity or conversely the faster 1 over x to the n is going to go to 0. Uh, and, and once you kind of have a feeling for that, you can deal with limits at infinity for any rational function, and you can do it uh, without ever having to deal with these epsilon m proofs.